Dr. Roof. We're going to double check, triple check. We want to make sure that if anybody is there, we're going to find them and we're going to get them out before the storm comes. And we're not, the storm's not going to stop us. We might have to hunker down for a little while, but we're not going to stop until we're, we're confident that we, ha that we were able to rescue everyone who needs to be rescued. First responders going in when people were going out, uh, officials with the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office in Florida saying multiple fatalities from the tornadoes that touched down on the dirty mm -hmm. side of the storm. It's that when you have that counterclockwise rotation, that northeast quadrant of it, they call that the dirty side because that's where you get tornadoes spinning up. Okay. And we saw many yesterday. Several. And I mean, you're taking a look at the video. This is from St. Lucie County there. You can see police. You can see emergency responders checking on those victims. Now, the sheriff's office have confirmed that 17 tornadoes wow hit the county. There were over, uh, gosh, Not, it was it 95, 100 warnings? I think 98 at least. Yeah. That was the number I kept seeing this morning. And now a rescue mission currently underway as hundreds of homes have been obviously destroyed. You know, I mean, just those winds, there's there's nothing that you can really do to prevent and that kind of damage. We're getting new data in too from Fox Weather. There were more than 125 oh, wow. tornado warnings issued as of last night because even as the storm came on right. uh, the eye, you still had those warnings going up into uh, areas of Melbourne and Sanford and up to Jacksonville. National right. Weather Service's Miami office, office says it broke the record for most warnings issued in a single day. Uh, and uh, that was just in that office alone was 55. You're yep. talking about the whole state there, Heb, with over 125. Yep. And I'll tell you right now, that is right uh, ahead of Hurricane Ian. Mm. Uh, Ian was the most, and now Milton has surpassed that. And now I'm thinking back to the numbers that I was saying this morning. So 98 warnings, but that was actually within the time frame of noon to 6 p.m. Yeah, and then so, you had more. Good and then you, so, the right, that makes sense now that we're seeing the 125 number that expanded after the 6 p.m. hour. Um, but yeah, this is something I know you were sending emails at all hours of the night last night. That's why I asked you if you slept because you had been on this focus on it. I it would kept kind of sleep because like, I felt like I slept. Yeah, really? Well, that's good. To recheck those emails, make sure I didn't say anything. <laughs> right, else. Didn't anything. No. Let me tell you what I really think. Right, anyway, right. Anyway, rescue teams are hard at work searching for pets as well as people from the hurricane animal shelters in some of the oh. northern states, like the Animal Rescue League of Boston. They're landing a hand and taking in cats and dogs who were in the path of the storm. Oh. We saw the one video. Gosh, it was so sad. Oh, of I know. The, um, uh, the dog that was chained to a fence. I that can't. State Highway sense. Patrol got taken care of. Yeah, there he is, my, right there. I'm so glad. I'll, you can come yeah. home with me, buddy. You can come home with me in my crazy house. But volunteers now working to get supplies in North Carolina, too, for those who have been affected by Hurricane Helene. Um, and down at the Emergency Operations Center in Tampa, puppies are helping to boost morale. They do help. This is, a, this is one of the things that I was thinking about yesterday. I'm watching the CNN coverage. And they are staying in the same places. They're going out live to this reporter, that mm -hmm. reporter. And you can see that wave, that surf, like right behind them. I was, it was freaking me out. I'm like, where did they go? Right. I mean, I, they, they do have plans. When you plan your, you know, your coverage or whatnot, you, you're in, sometimes the reporter's out, but the camera's in a parking deck or garage or surrounded by buildings. So there is that plan. And, and there's been a know. lot of criticism over the years, too. Like, how are you stand out there and stuff? If you do it smartly and safely, I think it it's, is vital because it shows people, hey, you got out. Maybe it's not going to be as bad as you think it is, but we're showing you how bad it is with the surf coming in with the wind. Just to give you that perspective of, okay, yeah, you know what? I don't need to be there Well, to, I, and I, I, if you're a resident. I would say, too, because it kind of, for me, it's like, yes, it satisfies our curiosity. Wow, look how bad that is. I do just worry, though, about the safety because I'm just, you know, Anderson Cooper did that live shot last night and the, right there, you know, it was right there. And I'm guy thinking, in Fox weather. I was I mean, I was yeah, it was he was he was hunkered yeah. down in there, but he set it up with, you know, they were in a very big beast vehicle and the guys out there and whatnot. But it does go to show you, I mean, because yeah. you don't have power in a lot of those spots. Yep. So your nest cameras or whatnot aren't on. So you can't see what's really happening. Sure, you see the aftermath right now. Maybe there's this much water where you're at right. now, but last night was it up here, it, you know? So they're sure that's what they're showing to show people it is worth yeah. your time to evacuate and get out. Uh, absolutely. And again, yeah. those those images, I'm sure that we'll continue to see throughout the day. And not only, you know, from the storm surge, but the tornadoes, because it was around this time.